Your friends from the Light FM get unique opportunities to speak with Bible teachers, authors, and speakers about the things that matter to you. Here's Tricia with another hopeful conversation we thought you might like. Hey there, so glad that you are here today. So excited to introduce you to a new friend, Mike Golay. Quick backstory, a dear friend of mine shared with me that she'd been listening to a really excellent teaching organization and she'd learned so much about the Bible from this organization. It's called Behold Israel. So I started watching the videos. I started paying attention. I started um, reading their messages, hearing their messages, and it filled me with such hope. And that is why I wanted to invite our new friend, Mike Golay, to join us today because it is all about hope. Mike, so glad you're here. Let me just tell you, our friend Mike is a pastor, a chaplain in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. He's the director of operations at this amazing organization called Behold Israel, but he's also a husband and a father. And just like us trying to raise a family and walk through these unprecedented times and finding hope in these times. And that is why I wanted Mike to join us today. Mike, thank you so much for being here. Tricia, it is an honor and a privilege to be with you here today. Great, 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 great. Well, I have received so much hope from the messages with Behold Israel. And that is why I wanted to talk to you today because I think hope, we're struggling to find it right now. And these are unprecedented times, uncertain times, use whatever word you want. How are you finding hope in this world? Well, I might be a unique uh, animal in the picture here because as a pastor of a church for 17 years, I've been preaching about prophecy and the end times and even held uh, entire studies from Daniel and Revelation. But for me, Tricia, this is really kind of like all of the teaching and preaching and all of the verses that we've been throwing out and equipping our people with, I finally get to say, here it is. This is it. Now, <laughs> knowing that, Tricia, and teaching that is one thing, right? But to experience it and the, and the losses and watching what's going down with almost like evil unleashed, it's very hard to experience, which really comes back to your question of how do I find hope? Um, I find hope in the fact that scripture is true. I'm finding that's even more true now as I experience exactly what it said. Can I quote one passage just to kind of illustrate this? This is from yeah, 1 Timothy please. chapter 4, verse 12. Now listen to this, folks. It says, now the spirit, and this was written in the first century. Keep that in mind. Now the spirit expressly says that in the latter times, the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits, and doctrines of demons is what it says, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. And this is, this is unfolding all over the world. Not to say that it never was, but what I'm saying, there's been a sharp increase of this activity, especially over the last year, Tricia. And so my hope is in the Bible and the truth of God's word. If if we've been preaching it and conceptualizing what would happen, now we're seeing it happen in reality, which brings me even more back to the Bible. I guess you could call me a Bible addict. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a wonderful thing because you have all of the background and you're seeing us as scripture unfolds. Help us understand that. Maybe someone hasn't studied um, as much of the scripture. Help us understand where we are in these times. How are you identifying yeah. where we are in these times? Yeah, in Matthew chapter 24, in fact, I can even give you the actual reference. In Matthew 24, Jesus says to his disciples who were asking him about God's plans for Israel's future. They were wondering because Jesus wasn't exactly fulfilling the mission that the Orthodox Jews at the time thought he should. And the disciples were caught in the mix and they were asking about the national promises to Israel. And Jesus says, learn this parable from the fig tree, Matthew 24, 32 to 33. When its branch is, has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know the summer is near. 
So you also, when you see these things, know that it is near at the doors. Now, folks, if you read what Jesus said in Matthew 24 about the signs of the end times, you know then that the signs of the end times is Israel coming back to life after their exile of being in the nations after Jesus left. Ezekiel goes a step further. He, he, he predicts in 36 and 37, basically the Holocaust, the resuscitation of the nation of Israel, which already happened in 1948. At that time, we should have been watching. If that's not enough, Tricia, in Ezekiel 38 and 39, it predicts a coalition of forces, Russia, Iran, Turkey, also in cahoots with Libya and Sudan, that they want to invade Israel for their resources. Right now, Israel is a natural gas uh, haven. And the times that we live in, although we do not know the time or hour, we do know that if we see the fig tree, Israel come to life, and this coalition of forces, we know that we are there. And, and Trish, if that's not enough, look at the increase of lawlessness, Look at the push for globalization, which the Bible predicted would happen. And look at the condition of the church worldwide in its integrity of teachings. And I just read the passage that will diminish. Mm -hmm. so, so it is exciting. It, it is so exciting. But like I said, to experience it as a human being, it does cause some anxiety. I will, I will not lie. Even if you know these things, and it, 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 as you're seeing them shake down, it's, wow, I say this to the Lord, wow, you were really right. Your word really is true. <laughs> and uh, that the million dollar question I, I would like to, I, I, that I ask myself all the time is, Mike, are you ready? And uh, that's the real question I constantly Talk ask myself. Talk about that a little bit, Mike. What does... What does it mean to be ready? It, how do you mean that? Because I, I think I understand what you mean, but I want to share that with everybody who may be listening right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Readiness has to do with, let's just say, Tris, Jesus came back right now while we're talking. What would be those things that we would immediately regret that we did not address in our lives? Would it be certain activities that we do in secret? Would it be wow, I wish I would have done more prayer up to this time. Would it be, wow, I could have helped somebody or assisted somebody? I, I think readiness will look different for each one of us. But if I was to put a universal biblical blanket on all of us, it's making sure that our relationship with Jesus is as we would want it to be if he, were, if he was to come right now. Just like a bride waiting for a groom, She's beautified. She's ready to make that uh, change in her life. And she has no regrets. That's the real question I have to ask myself. And perhaps everyone does. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting because we've known to ask ourselves that. But because of the urgency, I think that a lot of us feel, and because of what we're seeing in the world, there's not a second to waste. There is not a second to wait. Folks, you, you, just as we've read, when you see the fig tree come to life, that alone back in 1948 should have been a clue. We're in 2021. And everything the Bible said would happen is happening. It is happening right now. What more, what more, what, what additional layer do we need to convince the audience that we are indeed approaching the last day of the last hour of the last minute. This is something I did not believe I would experience in my life. I thought my kids might, but wow, the globalization push, the lawlessness, look at what's going on in the Middle East, Tricia, right now. Can I well, say I want something? you to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. yeah. Not only does Ezekiel 38 and 39 predict Russia, Iran, and Syria, uh, Turkey coming together in Syria. It also mentions the, this place called Sheba and Didan. Sheba and Didan has always been a mystery to me because that region is in the Gulf states, the, the Arabian Peninsula. And I thought, wow, 
why would these guys condemn such a coalition when they all share an Islamic thread, or at least a world globalization thread like Russia? And, and this Sheba and Dedan in the passage of Ezekiel looks upon this invasion led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey, and they are critical of it. Now I understand why, because they have peace with Israel and they're allied to Israel. Did you know Israel is sending the Iron Dome technology, which is a, it's a ballistic missile defense system, to these countries for deployment right now as we speak? Amazing. So all these things are happening that I think five years ago, we would have no idea that would be coming together including if we think about what's happened in the past two years with the pandemic and how the world is kind of trying to figure out the next steps, we, we would never have imagined that as, as little as three years ago, don't you think? Yeah, it is happening very fast and unfolding at a rate of speed that I never anticipated or understood from my first interpretation of these scriptural passages in prophecy. I, 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 if it's happening this fast, and if we're a predictor of the future, based on the past behavior of, of the track record of the world, you can bet that this fast track is going to continue, maybe even faster, Tricia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you've mentioned Israel, and we can learn a lot when we look at Israel. Israel's future is so important to us as believers. Um, and, and so help us understand how to look at Israel. I think a lot of times we feel like there's so much going on in our own country, we're just trying to pay attention to, to what's happening here. But why is it important for us as believers to not only look at Israel's past, but Israel's future as well? That's a great question. As, as an American patriot myself, and one that just loves this country and, and serves in, even in the military, I have to recognize that my true passport identity is in heaven. And I have to acquiesce to that plan and rather than try to keep fighting for my own country's future as much as I fight for the future of God's plan. That doesn't mean I'm not patriotic. That doesn't mean I won't vote. That doesn't mean I won't fight. But the true epicenter of prophecy, and I'm sorry to say this, is not the United States. It's not Canada. It's not Ecuador, Brazil, Australia, New Zealand. It's not Japan, Russia, or any African country or any European country. It's Israel. And we have to die to the right that our own countries will become utopiast. We just have to die to that right because the scripture does not say that. It actually says, the world will come together and reject God, choose their own ingenuity, and try to create a world that's good. But Israel is mentioned as, a, as an eternal possession for the Jews based on the Abrahamic covenant. It, is also, it also involves national promises, some of which we've covered right now, and those national promises are being fulfilled today. Uh, in the 1800s, when Theodore Herzl had a vision to put forth a Jewish nation after he realized and predicted there would be a huge persecution against the Jews, late 1800s, he said only the nation of Israel will be the safest place for our people. And that happened in 1948. He wasn't there to see that vision come true. And in a sense, he was a prophet to predict that there would be a great Holocaust. In fact, he said in the late 1800s, he said, there will be a time coming very soon where our people will be attacked and we need our own homeland. And so is, uh, Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27, specifically state that this end times tribulation and second coming is specifically designed really for Israel and the holy city, which is Jerusalem. And so, Tricia, to answer your question, Israel is the epicenter of God's plans. And when we look at our own countries, we pray for our countries, we vote the way our conscience guides us, and we do the best to keep things going in terms with God's principles. But if we want to interpret prophecy correctly, we must watch Israel and the fig tree, which he refers to in the prophecy of Matthew 24, Israel. Yes, yes. Well, what should we be looking for next? We, what we should be watching, what's going on with the coalition forces in Syria, with Russia, Turkey, and Iran. 
we should be watching all of these countries' intentions. So if we're watching the Middle East and comparing it to the prophecies, which I just gave you, Ezekiel 38 and 39, uh, also ch check out Zechariah 12 and onwards. Take the Bible, my friends. Start reading some of the prophetic passages. You won't understand them the first time through. It can be intimidating. But what I used to do when I first started out is I'd take a pad and pencil and I'd write down all my questions related to the passage. And then I would pray and say, God, guide me to the right answers. And uh, do you think God would look down from heaven and say, nope, I'm going to let you, I'm going to leave you hanging. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, I'm just going to do a, switch, a bait and switch. God is good about leading you to good places. It may take time, yeah. may take patient, patience, it may take study, but wow watch what's happening with the global world order and the intentions of many companies around the world and the intentions of governments keep your eye on israel and what's going on in the middle east and keep reading the bible specifically prophecy and my friends can i say this trisha don't mm -hmm. lock yourself in your room or in your basement and become a conspiracy theorist and lose your mind Stay connected, stay healthy, call your mom, call your friends, go do things with your friends, even if it's just talking over the phone. If you're scared to go out, you must stay connected. We have to guard our hearts and our minds during this time. Trish, I see a lot of people losing their minds. They're sending me all kinds of crazy stuff. And I check in with some of these people and they tell me, I don't have anybody I can talk to. I, I'm here alone. And so that's one of those spiritual components you dare not compromise in this, in, in this pandemic. Um, so Israel, the rise of globalism, checking out reliable news sources, but most importantly, even if you can't do any of that, read scripture, pray, and stay connected, Tricia. Oh, I am so glad to hear you say these things and, and, and break it down into a, a, a really doable way of looking at things. And I love what you shared about reading the prophecies, reading the scripture, then writing down your questions and praying. God loves us so much. He wants us to understand. That's why he gave his word to us. And so I do believe, just as you said, that he will give us those answers. So let's say someone's listening right now and hearing about this is bringing up fear. Mm. What would you say to them? What might you say to encourage their heart. I would say to you, my friend, I am with you. The more you know, the more you see what's actually unfolding, which could, if you're not careful, increase your fear. Being ignorant is a convenient place to be. But once you start realizing <laughs> some of these things and seeing them with your own eyes, it can really buffet your faith. And, uh, Trisha, can I just be really honest? Every single day, I come back to the classic passage in Philippians, and I want to read it to your audience. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, and this is just kind of how I, I've memorized it, do not be anxious for anything, for anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving and the peace of God. Friends, the, this is a promise. If we bring our requests and our anxieties before the Lord with thanksgiving, the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. And so my, my silver bullet that I use, Tricia, is the passage of scripture that Paul said, Sometimes I have to pray that several times a day. It could be something challenging I'm going through within the workplace, or it could be something, uh, maybe it's a difficult person I'm dealing with and I don't know how to deal with it. It could be watching the news and seeing what's shaking down. It could be an invasion that's happening. And, and I just, there's no source of peace than if I actually take that anxiety and put it at the throne of Jesus. And if, if I can picture this of what's going on behind the curtain, I would imagine Jesus smiling, saying, don't worry, I said this would happen, and I've already won the war. In a weekend, I conquer death, sin, and demonic forces. When I come back, I'll conquer all political entities and establish my kingdom. Mike, 
relax. I got this. That's what I need, Trish, Trisha. I mean, if you took, yeah. if that verse was in the Bible, I, I'd go to a Psalm. If the Psalms were in the Bible, I'd go to some of the prophets for comfort. And so there's plenty in scripture. Yeah. I'd say, take your pick, but that's my favorite uh, passage that caps, that just encapsulates my, my fears and anxieties. Yeah. And we all fear, don't we, Trisha? Why, why is there so much mm-hmm. written in scripture? Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Why, why are they saying that? Because believers did fear and we do. And we do. Mm-hmm. So that's a great question. Thanks for ans- asking that. Well, thank you for answering it. And I, I love, we just can go back to scripture every time, every request, every need God has has provided for us a promise in his word. And we can just lean on that, whether we're looking at the news or whether we're looking at a doctor's diagnosis. And I appreciate you bringing that because the same weapon that we use to fight anxiety about the things that are happening in our lives is the same weapon we use to fight anxiety with the things that are happening in the world. And we just keep looking up and with expectancy and joy because Jesus is coming back, right, Mike? (laughs) He is, he is. Trisha, we have a front row seat to prophecy being fulfilled. All those conversations we've been having with our non-believing friends, we can now go and say, here it is. Here's actual more evidence. You could even say proof that the Bible called it. I speak uh, to people about prophecy, non-believers, and you should see some of their faces are like, wow, is that actually the Bible that was actually written 2000 plus years ago? Yep. Wow. You can see the dilemma for them to make a hard choice of whether to believe or to continue to live in ignorance. Never has been a time, Tricia, where we've actually seen the Bible validated in reality in terms of prophecy than now. And I say, Mm -hmm. take advantage of that. You say, well, how do I do that? Just choose to read different portions of prophecy and work your way through. I'll make a suggestion. Read all of Daniel, read all of Revelation, take notes, ask the text questions, and seek God. Then go into the minor prophets, the major prophets, and the, the New Testament teachings. You can do this, folks. You can open up the word of God. If you have questions, bring them to God and he will miraculously bring you to the sources for answers. He won't give you all the answers. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting. I got, I I cannot wait to sit at the feet of Jesus. I've got my list of a gazillion questions. If there's a long (laughs) winter evening, I'm up here in Minnesota, it's winter time. But if there's a long winter evening, I'm going to ask Jesus uh, by the, if there's such thing like a campfire and sit with him and (laughs) kind of my sanctified imagination and ask him all my questions. Sure, oh, yeah. Man, I've got a I think there must be some mores in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Campfires yeah. and some mores with Jesus. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, I, I boy, apologize to your audience so for, for appearing maybe uh, a little bit jovial on this issue. But uh, yeah, anyway. What, what comes springing out of you is the hope and the joy of Jesus. That's what we see. And that, and thank you for sharing that. That's so exciting. And when I see someone who is steeped in scripture, that isn't as, I mean, yes, you've got some fears about the future, but you, you see God's plan un, unfolding and it's bringing you joy and peace. That gives me joy and peace. And that's what we want. We want that joy. We want that peace. We want that hope. And we're so grateful for our eternity. Now, let me ask Mike, Let's say someone's watching and they're like, I want to hear more from Mike. I want to hear more from Amir. I want to hear more uh, from Behold Israel. How can they find out more information about Behold Israel? Well, we do have a website, beholdisrael.org. That's simple, beholdisrael.org. If you go to App Store and your Google or uh, Apple phone, you could type in Behold Israel. We have an app. That, by the way, is an excellent way to stay in touch with us because it gives you notifications to a lot of our videos and new teachings. We have a Facebook site. Uh, It's also called Behold Israel. We have a YouTube channel. You guessed it. It's also called Behold Israel. And you'll see a logo. I sense a theme. Like this. (laughs) That's the logo. That's the logo you want to look for. We're not a a big uh, ministry, um, but we love each other. We're, We're really busy. And we love to advance the word of God worldwide and expose that which is Israel. That's why we call her, ourselves Behold Israel. Behold Israel, God, the apple of God's eye and the epicenter of prophecy, which unlocks all of the interpretation of some of those mysterious prophecies. If you get that, that's the first key of really understanding scripture. 
wonderful. Mike, thank you so much for speaking with, uh, with us today. Thank you for sharing the hope that you found in the scriptures. I think we're excited to dive in there ourselves. So thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much, Tricia. It's an honor to be with you here today. <laughs>